Hey guys, it's Ryan with Fluid Health bringing you another episode of Science Powered Fitness. Today we're going to talk a little bit about um, the hamstring, the obliques, and the IT band. We're going to talk about the hip mobility. Sometimes when we look at mobility, we think of it as central to a short muscle, or that the muscle might be adaptively shortened because the muscle itself has actually uh, lost length. There could be scarring or connective tissue that overgrows it so it doesn't lengthen. Sometimes there's a neural tone to that muscle, so it's overreacting, so it's trying to keep the, the muscle in a state of contracture so it doesn't stretch. That could be from a protection or an overuse, but all sorts of reasons why the leg doesn't move. Now, if we're looking at the hip, we know that the hip can move in, in three different planes of movement. It can move forward to back, it can move side to side, or it can twist. And so when we identify range of motion limitations, what we're really doing is we're looking at the planes of movement we're assessing it for its functional role. Can it move in a normal or in what would be considered a normative range of motion? So what do healthy populations demonstrate? And then how do your hips move? So sometimes it's thought of as restriction because of the, the structural component, which again is just the fascia or the muscle itself. Um, sometimes again, it's bone structure that limits it. So sometimes your ball in the socket can't move and that's a, a bone block or an osseous block. And so the restriction of movement isn't necessarily about the actual muscle itself, but the orientation of the structure being supported by stability. So they've done some research on the hip's lateral stability, which means bringing the leg in or out. And I wanna show what that looks like. That would be considered adduction. Once again, this is a visible body. It's an app online. It's a great little anatomy tool for those looking to learn biomechanics. That shows the organization of the limb moving into adduction. What I want you to note is the ball gliding in the socket. So if the surface orientation of that socket, it's called the acetabulum, is in a, in a proper position, well then the glide of the head of the humerus is gonna, or excuse me, the femur is gonna move well in that socket. And that again is referred to as appropriate kinematics. So, so again, kinematics just is joint motion. So that means glide and spin and roll mechanics are properly maintained by the stability of that socket. And that socket's positioned through, again, strength rolls of the hamstring and the abdominals to support the hips position so that the leg can glide in that socket well. So sometimes people misinterpret the range of motion limitation as a side IT band or a TFL restriction when in reality it's a, it's a bone block and that has to do with the weakening of the abdominals and the hamstrings. We see that oftentimes on our non-dominant hip, which is typically the left side. Now this is a big issue because the sensory receptors within the socket, again there's a little mechanoreceptors that tell the brain if, the, if it should interpret the movement as stable, they become compromised or hypersensitized because of the wear cycle being irregular and then that can then create a guarding effect around the hip which then reduces the efficiencies of the muscles that support it, and then it further exacerbates the instability, and then eventually the restriction range. So then we can see both a structural and a mechanical limitation as the limb is mispositioned, and now we see an overuse of the IT band and the lateral hip musculature. So oftentimes it's more than just the mechanical, sometimes it's more than structural, sometimes it's all of it, but we have assessments that we use to guide our judgment, and and that's called an overs test, it's a sideline test. And again, you would wanna work with someone who understands the difference between, again, a structural, a mechanical, or a neural restriction and mobility. So again, broad picture, do the overs to assess the range of motion. Again, that's a test that we can show you later. You can look it up online. Otherwise, work with someone who has the skill set to look at that. And again, make sure that you're doing the right thing. If you're stretching an IT band when really it's just a strength imbalance that keeps that socket from going where it belongs, make sure you're doing the right work for the right issue. Questions on any of this, admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. And remember, your body is designed to move, so stay in motion, and we'll see you soon.